hello and welcome to Felting Fun with Steph and Jo. Jo. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot which. Oh yeah, that side. I just one day I'll get it right, won't I? I'm not even good today. <laughs> ah, so here we are again and it well we we missed july didn't we let's be honest we missed july. we did miss july so july was a bit of an well it was a bit of an odd month for both of us i think you were in the midst yeah. of moving house and still are and yes. um we were in the midst of co everybody everybody had covid we all had covid oh yeah I yeah yeah i had a, i also had a poorly cat bless her little tea. oh you did yes yeah. Uh, yeah bless her little cotton socks so um, yes yes july was a busy busy sort of so anyway so we're back in august with a vengeance we're back we're back and we'll be back in <laughs> yes yeah. yes so the title today is um sort of legs and feet or it's kind of that detail -y bit isn't it that yes. lots of people yeah have questions and struggle with and um yeah so but before we get there we obviously need to talk about prizes and nice yeah. things like that so um show us your prizes well pri the prize for august right. is uh, one of our gorgeous uh, wool felting mats mm -hmm. love them in fact if i'm feeling super generous i might actually put in a pack of of the three different sizes because this is the Ooh. biggest one and I'm having a little look around to see if there's any in arm's reach. I don't have the, the medium one up here. I've got a small one, which I'll probably show. Oh, here we go. Here's the little one. It's really cute. Oh, that's really, really useful when you're doing legs and things and you want to put something in between while you're doing really useful. Yeah, really it's useful. such a useful size. And actually, it's even useful for storing your felting needles in, just to having next to you. Um, yeah. like, like a green cushion, I guess. It's like one of these kind of stress buster things. I just love them. It's just such a nice size. So you'll get a large one and a medium one and a small one. Mm -hmm. um, maybe colors That's a good it. prize. Yeah. Do, can, I, can, can I subscribe, like, and comment as well? <laughs> you may, of course you may. It always makes me laugh when we run the magic um, machine that picks the names out and I, you can watch all the names and she, your name comes up again and again. It's, so. it's me, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely so, brilliant. What have you got? So I'm my giraffe course and I'm just suddenly thinking I probably, um, this is dreadful because I've half packed my studio, which is a trauma in itself. And I'm thinking, I'm sure I've got one of the giraffes. Excuse me, I should have oh, been I've a bit more prepared. <laughs> Have I? Oh, have I got one over here? She says. Yes, oh. one is here, darling. Yes. <laughs> I have got one. I'll just, uh, we'll just, just we'll just chat amongst ourselves while you um. <laughs> yes, while you <laughs> I've got Tango rather than Prince this time. Tango with his orange blessing. So oh, yeah. I've got my, I've got my little online course which shows you um how to make Tango and uh, for the competition if you win. I'll send you the um, fibres to make him as well. So there we go. Brilliant. That's, that's a super prize. He's and a, um, a couple of really good results we've seen already. Did Heather make one? I and know. Who else made yes. one? Sue. It was Sue. Sue, Sue and yeah. Heather. Really yeah, we've still got a couple of more to come. But yeah, absolutely fantastic. Love them. Yeah. Love them. Really good. Sharing. That's one of the great things, isn't it? When everyone shares everything that they've done. I love yeah. watching what yeah, they're it's all. Nice to see. So to be in with a chance of winning a prize, mm -hmm. you just need to um, comment, like, and subscribe to the channel below. And I'll have a little thing across the screen to remind you to do that. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we had some questions, didn't we? From um, yeah. we asked for some questions, and you are the question master tonight. So. I am indeed right. Okay, which one shall we go for first? Okay, so Janet said she'd like some advice on using sprays and wax. She used several coats of hairspray on her rooster's feet, partly to get the texture right, but also the wool tight. She'd like to know what's the best way to keep fingers and toes from becoming too fat. Hmm, okay. Yes. So, I, I mean, it's interesting, isn't it? Because um, the whole toe come um, foot 
thing is one of those things that you do perfect and we all start off with robins and things really don't we yeah. and um, one of the things that I in fact it's in the video for the um, crafty kit birds and we we mm -hmm. separated out the feet as well didn't we so that people could just look up the feet but yeah. um, you probably won't be able to um, see it unless you can go in on this on your um, screens but when I um, wind up the toes I always leave a loop on the end and then mm -hmm. I snip that loop so that I can pull it out to be a claw that was such a good tip and I just think that helps also because my tip with regards to initially wrapping obviously if you've got a kit you're going to use what's in the kit but if you're having a bit of a practice yourself find it this is a good thing for using merino wool if you've got your amazon merino little packs oh, yes. <laughs> this is the time to use it because it's flat and it will be quite long and where you can't use it probably very well in your felting it enables you to produce a nice little ribbon so that when you want to wrap because Obviously, in lots of the kits, you don't have to wrap anything around the feet at all. But if you've suddenly decided you want to get texture and everything, um, it just means that you can hang on to it and wrap it really easily. And that will go quite flat to the um, wire. My tip is make it really, really, really thin because you wrap to the end and then wrap back again so you don't get a loose end at the yes. end. Yeah, that's always a bit tricky, isn't it? If you, if you yeah. You need to go backwards and forwards so you don't want to use too much wool too otherwise much. it will fat which was the, the then we'll get issue planet wanted to to solve and do you're not then having to felt it at all you're not poking it with the needle you're just no. making sure that it's wrapped really tightly now you could yeah. so was janet asking about what i'm um, using waxes and sprays waxes and, and sprays and things yeah yeah because that, um, well, it's going straight onto wire, but you know, a bit of, I've seen, um, I don't use it myself, but I think Alison Rumbles is quite a big fan of using lanolin in a yeah, pot, right. which is really sticky. Um, it's yeah. quite, I, I, I don't really like that kind of messy work, which is why I never do wet felting. So, thank <laughs> no, you. I don't either. <laughs> yeah. I don't do wet felting. Yes, and no. glueiness, it's not really my bag. Um, so I never really liked the feeling of it, but it's brilliant for getting wool to stick to itself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, if you the other thing to... I've played with is that if you've extended out the toe, so you've got the wire toe. I have actually got um, loads of beeswax because we used to keep bees. don't know if you knew that. Did you know we used to keep bees? Anyway, um, we yeah. might have mentioned it before. But anyway, so we've got loads of wax, but you can get felt as wax as well, which is in all different colours. So yes. I used to put some wax on the little toe bit just to, so it wasn't wire, you know. And I would have a little bit on my finger and so then I would just use that to put round as opposed to lopping on a load of it and then thinking, oh my God, now I've got it nice and thick and yes. it's difficult. But one thing about waxes is the first time you add wax, it just soaks into the wool. Mm -hmm. so do whatever you need to do and leave it the mistake i think people make is oh i'll just add another bit and then you'll have blobs of it all over the place oh yes yeah too much so that, that's mm -hmm. yeah so that's have less ever, is more yeah have you ever tried hair wax no yeah so oh. if you don't want to use lanolin or you can't get hold of lanolin um use a sticky hair wax or a hair putty not the kind of not the gloopy stuff but the stuff that's kind of so, almost solid in the pot and honestly one one pot of hair wax will last you about 30 Does years probably ever. yeah it would do wouldn't it jeez that's just reminded me is that when i sometimes do little wrappings like that is um i put hand cream on my hand first and just yeah. that along the what just gives a little bit to actually keep everything all tucked in as you do. You just reminded me of that by doing yeah. yeah. Great hint. Oh, well, just wreck the table soon. <laughs> you wreck the table and, and I'm exposing my underwear. But do you know what? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, I've been doing this, I've just been walking about all day with my bra just kind of on show thinking oh, it just looks like a vest so sorry about that but i'm just going to kind of give up trying to hide it just because it just keeps just go back. with it yeah 
I'm just yeah. gonna go next. Yeah. Just, I mean, when you do that, you just have to. That, this is on purpose, don't you? It's like, yeah, this is meant yeah. to have this look. I'm meant to oh, I'm like, like this. What you don't do is you don't tell everybody that's watching you use yes. the video using your <laughs> underwear. <laughs> Style it out. That's what they say, don't they? Style it out. It was meant to be. <laughs> oh dear. Honest, where did I put this? The trouble with me in. Yeah. You see, this is where I'm such not an admin person because I've just you know randomly thrown the questions somewhere and I now need to go and find. So I like I've now. question and answer format. <laughs> it doesn't it? It is. <laughs> it is good. I like it. Okay. How do you get the wire really tight so that the feet aren't too clunky? I have only done one kit with the feet, <laughs> but my dog got hold of it and killed it. Nice. So I don't oh. have any photos to demonstrate oh. what I mean. <laughs> oh, you hear um, that. Bless. But um, how much the video needs more practice? But yeah, sorry. I'm presuming that um, this, this lady, presuming it's a lady. Carol. Carol Notman, yeah. Oh, Carol Notman. Carol came to see me. Oh, asked, yeah, the other day. She yeah, there you go. She appeared in the workshop a couple of days ago, but it's Wednesday now. It must have been Monday, and um, she'd come from all the way over from Fife. I think she, Carol, might have thought we had a shop, but she came to get some some wool. And oh. um, it doesn't look like you have a shop, to be honest. Well, we did used to have a shop. Um, until we needed space to make it. <laughs> so, hi Carol. Um, <laughs> and so I'm going to presume that Carol's made um, one of our kits with a twisted wire. Yes. Eight. And then she did watch the video and then she has got some pliers, but has only done it once. Yes. I think that the, tr I think um, as we were saying earlier, the trick to that is just practice. It's just practice and using the pliers really does help although you can twist that wire with your fingers but it's quite difficult but the the you trick also when using the pliers because it's so much easier using the pliers to twist the wire is just to go really slowly when you're twisting mm -hmm. so if you twist wire too quickly it'll just it'll heat up too much although it won't feel yeah. hot in your hands but the wire just comes under too much tension and it'll end up snapping yeah. So, yeah, it, it, I used it, to do that a lot actually. I used to snap it a lot when I very first. You think, why? Why do I? Do? But you're right, it's just the whole getting just a little bit too keen on it, isn't it? Whereas, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. just twist it slowly and um, yeah, it just, just practice and you should get it yeah. quite quite neat, really. And that the twisted wire method for making the bird's feet is just a really nice kind of beginner's introduction. Um, they didn't need to be covered with any wool. They look quite nice, just left as they are. Or you could yes. use the wrapping them. Really well, I love the I love the colour of the wire that you have in the kits as well. Is that kind yeah, of it's, it's lovely coppery. It's really coppery, yeah, it's lovely, yeah, which works quite well. But as I say, you can still do that little claw bit as well. I like the claw bit because it then holds on when you've got the piece. It helps to stand up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> really good. good Claws tip. in. Yeah. I've um oh I was just gonna show just going to an extreme as I like to. Let me get my she's this is um oh, she's back. I know I'm back. So this is my Oh yeah, let's have a look. Now their feet and with really long claws. So that was just wire with wool mm. wrapped round. Um yeah. and of course when you look at birds' feet, they aren't actually these nice little flat little things. They are quite gristly aren't they type things yeah, quite so knobbly. um yeah so these are quite knobbly with their very long yeah yes. not but, sure yeah. what so and that did i put, i'm just trying to think did i put any wax no i didn't put any wax on that so i think i'll put a little bit of um as i say i think i use sometimes a bit of glue on my fingers and just to give it yeah. or that um hand cream but yeah. otherwise you get it too much because they're quite tiny aren't they so on there Steph, have you or do you ever use um polymer clay yes no i don't i use a japanese brand mm -hmm. i'm trying to remember the name of it but i i tend to always use the cream one and paint it with nail varnish or something whatever color no. i want it to be but in yes. fact if my meerkat the claws on my meerkat they are polymer clay yeah for those okay. 
And did you make them first and then add them on? Or did you put them onto the meerkat and put the whole thing in the oven? Oh, God, no, not bakeable ones. No, I don't bake them. No, this oh. is air drying, air drying. Oh, air drying. Medina. I use Modena, M-O-D-E-N-A. Modena air dry clay. Right, so which you, would you get in a natural colour and... Um, if I needed to colour it, then I would do. In fact, I quite often use, you know, the um, the pens that we have, the little Copic markers or even the little paint things that you, we quite often use, you know, to do faces. I, I will quite often use those on the clay as well because they colour up really, really quickly, the, the yes. polymer. But air drying, so make the piece first and then uh -huh. I would... Um, add on and I did the same with my pangolin because they're huge claws and I yeah. made them afterwards and then I cut a little hole in the fingers of the piece and glue it in that's when I use oh. glue I do use glue do you use glue well glue definitely has its has its place so that's yeah. really interesting so air dry clay that you can then paint afterwards or polymer clay which you can now I know that you can um add the claws or Alison rumbles you know she creates all these amazing dogs mm. and foxes and things with shiny black oh, noses nice. so she makes all of the noses individually from polymer clay and they go onto the dog and then the whole, the whole dog goes into the oven oh. because it's only going in at 150 degrees right. it's a very very low temperature so it's not it's not hot enough to do any damage to the wool but it bakes that um nose on in place mm. um, and then, now instead then, of that what i do i sometimes have used wax i've made the nose out of wool sometimes i've used wax and sometimes i've used um like pva glue or a different i've actually got a different brand but it's basically pva yes um, which once again sinks in and then you put it on again it just gives that little shine to it but um i'm useless at making noses out of polymer clay so you know i'm much better at felting them on and going like that and then putting a, an effect on and that's how i do okay good good mm. and the I, I guess we're not talking about limbs anymore we're, we're still to have <laughs> oh oh I've, actually i've got another limb question that something somebody asked i've just suddenly remembered yeah. Because we come from, back to the limbs. Come back. We'll come back to limbs because we were doing armatures and we were saying how last time you know um, we do it all in one and um, some of them you know do it wound all the way round. Others are attaching bits. What yeah. somebody asked and I can't remember who it was, but they were saying, oh, so they've seen that some people make the body of whichever creature it is and then they actually do like a wire for the legs and put them on and it's like yes, they th there are lots of um, artists that do that and they were saying is that a reason or a choice thing it's an absolute choice thing because I'm pretty sure that um, Cindy Lou who makes fabulous Alsatian dogs sometimes she does that with hers and other times she doesn't and it's just her choice I guess of the position that the animal is going to be and um, how you know I guess if it's lying down it's easier to do it afterwards pure choice thing about finding a way that works for you to be honest yeah. and um, you know, for people who are starting out with our armatures, um, I would suggest probably, you know, as we said, looking looking at the, the skeleton of the animal to get the proportions right and, and working from the inside out um, and building up. So you'd, you'd literally start with the basic skeleton and then add the wool mm. so that you're, you're sculpting um, and start that way. But then try it, try it a different way. There's no right or, or wrong way to do it. Um, I guess... Also, if you're someone who always gets to that point and then thinks, oh my God, the legs are too long or too short or something, then that might work for you that you do the body bit and then go, let me do the legs separately because now I know how long they need to, you know, because we all have different difficulties to <laughs> the bit that we always go, oh God, here we go. There's this bit I hate. <laughs> well, and actually talking about um, legs being too long um, and, and that, that stage, I've seen a lot of people work this way. Um, I know that Alison works this way. I know that Michaela Bartlett, um, I'm sure, works this way as well. Her fabulous foxes and, and badgers and all the beautiful wildlife that she creates, where she creates the armature completely, you know, spine and, and front legs and back legs and so on. 
but the 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 wire for the back legs is much longer than it's going to end up being so that it can actually yeah. be pushed into the sponge or whatever it is that she's working on mm. so that's the, the the strong wire is used to stabilize the armature while she's working on it and then it's the 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 legs and the feet are finished last i presume and then they're cut well, down to, to yeah. size and as you say you always see that don't you on her pieces when she shows you her halfway through and yes. yeah and it and it's and I, whenever I see that, I think, well, I must try that next time. And I never do, just because I'm obviously so familiar with my own little way of doing it. I like to have a little rounded bit for the foot, and that's how I... Because I quite often make my toes separately and then add it, and I like to put it within this look. And it's just my way that I've done it. And you think, yeah, I'm never going to get around to... And I know that she uses... But I use magnets, you see, to hold mine. And, oh? Magnets? do tell what what what's <laughs> yeah so um i actually put i'm trying to think if i got anything up here which has got the um, magnets in so when i actually stand my pieces in fact the piece that um really shows it is my um pegasus who's um rearing up yes he in his feet there's magnets and in mm. the tail there's magnets and obviously uh, magnet in the stand so he can pop off but when i'm making them i have to put the magnet inside for yes. a while i used to really struggle and i've now found magnets with holes so that i can actually sew it round the armature wire and it's not going to actually come off um, amazing but magnets please. talking about magnets can i just stay uh, oh i'm going oh yes 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 oh yes loving so a, the badge it's lovely isn't it and it's got yes. nothing to do with needle felting at all but it is brand new and it's, <laughs> and it's magnetic so i thought i'd just show it off look at that and it needs to be shown off and what else can you use that for then well it's actually i'm the, its main purpose is not as a badge it's a needle minder which is magnetic so you put it onto your cross stitch or your tapestry or, or your embroidery and your needle sticks to it so you don't lose your needle could okay. use it for needle felting could you? Oh, for the needles. Oh, for putting your needles onto. What do you, what they do you mean? Well, you yeah. can put your needles on there, can you flap? Well. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm always shoving my, I mean, I'm here at the moment. I've got about 10 of them lying around on the desk. It might be a bit dangerous. How do In, I more, more than having them hanging around on my desk? I'm not, I mean, obviously, I wasn't thinking of wearing them. <laughs> Launching weapons at people. Can you imagine meeting someone? Oh, I'm so sorry. Bit of a hug there. Went a bit too far. <laughs> no, I was thinking on your. I was thinking on your work. I was thinking having as a needle. But <laughs> why would you even? Why would you do that? That's so ridiculous. <laughs> I'm not hugging you. I tell you. Those things on you. That's a really silly idea. So, yeah, I'm quite tired actually. That's yeah. But actually, that's really good because that proves that they are indeed magnetic with felting needles. And yes, there you, you could. I'm sure we could find a use. I mean, I know it would be much better if I did actually um, put mine into a holder. But my problem is, as with everything in my life, I finish using things and I randomly just put them down and I just end up with this oh, yeah. mess of stuff around. So if I had a magnet on my desk, which, you know, I have magnets on my pieces, <laughs> if I had a magnet on my desk, perhaps everything would just go wrong to the magnet. <laughs> <laughs> As I randomly put it down, it just wrong to the... <laughs> that would be great. I like that idea. <laughs> You'd be pretending up, wouldn't it? I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll pop one of these in with, with my prize as well. So Yay. you'll get a set. Felting, I'm feeling really generous. I must be really yeah. over yes. uh, three felting mats and a, a one of our needle handy. So there we go. Anyway, we yeah. digress. Is there another yes. question? Um, right. Um, so that was Carol, um, Janet Peters. Thank you for the armature workshop. That was really useful. Hands and feet. I know a lot of people struggle struggle with the robin feet, but after watching a tutorial. I found I don't find them as much a challenge 
I have steered away from human hands. Feet can be covered with boots, socks. Again, not easy. I struggle painting hands, so avoided felting them on figures. I understand that a human hand, theoretically, should be the same size as the face. Is that right? I suppose spread out. Yeah, same size. Yeah. Looks, like, looks like we're doing the alien, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah, kind of. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Well, mm. yeah. good. Okay. Um, yeah. Should be the same size, but not sure that applies to felting, as felted people are not to scale, or is that where I'm going wrong? Oh, okay. So now, people. I do do people, and um, I am actually doing a couple at the moment, but I can't show them because it's actually for a present. So that's for another day. But I have a fantastic book. I'm going to disappear for a second again. Right? Okay. If you want to know how to do everything to do with people, hands the lot. Yes. This is the book. Ah, oh, brilliant. That looks really good. And yeah. she shows you how to do caricatures like that where the head's big, but also how to do them the right size. And um, she shows you two, way, two ways of doing the hands, one with wire and one without. Now, I would always do them without because what I use is a cocktail stick to wrap the wall around and then mm -hmm. would place them around and then, you know, fold it together. So that's how, mm -hmm. and that's how she, in fact, you can see her hands sort of thing there. That's how she's done them mm. there. But it's a brilliant book. If you absolutely want to know how to do it, it shows you the armature, the details of the face and everything. Amazing. I always follow it. It's brilliant. I think so. the, the issue with, um, with, with hands is just the getting the fine detail. I think it's just, bec it's just because it's such a tiny thing. Mm. Um, so who is it? Now, I'm, I'm probably going to get her name wrong. Oh. Anna, Anna Potapova. Yes, 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 that's it, that's it. She does beautiful dolls. Absolutely beautiful dolls. And they're just stunning with the sweetest faces. And, um, you know, all the clothes and everything are, are handmade. The whole thing is, um, they're just beautiful little works of art. So she would be somebody that I would suggest being inspired by and have a look at her work and have a look at, at the detail that, that she gets on there. Or, or or lack of detail and how even something that doesn't necessarily look exactly like a human hand still is recognisable as a hand. And I think um, was the question about proportions and, and is it really necessary to have yeah. exact proportions? Well, I would suggest that Anna's dolls are probably not truly proportionate the heads no, are probably but they look big. beautiful and you don't look at it and think, oh, that's out of proportion. Exactly. Um, and the hand she has place. done a little online pdf for her hands and things as well so if, ah. if people look her up i think mm -hmm. you buy it via etsy but um she does show you how to do some of her marvelous it's definitely worth looking up she's very generous with her you know sharing her hints and tips yeah. and so on as well so yeah and, 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 also, and also i if i was doing the fingers i mean i might um do some nail polish but i would just add that on as color you know, I wouldn't yeah. worry about indenting where the nail was because you kind of, for me, that would just be a detail too far that I wouldn't. And I would just obviously make sure that the fingers were, you know, one slightly longer and that than the other. But I wouldn't be going for any more than if it was a lady that's likely to wear nail polish or, or men, actually, for that matter. But um, I would just, yeah, put colour on yeah. rather than. Yeah. yeah. Lovely. Good. Yeah. Fantastic. Anything, anything else? Hands and feet. I was just laughing um, earlier with Steph because you know we always have lots of samples to show at the, in in our <laughs> programs. All of my all of my samples are currently packed up in crates um, down in Harrogate in the warehouse, waiting for the next trade show, which is um, Autumn Fair at the NEC. Oh, have a look and see which samples I had that you know we could talk about hands and feet, <laughs> literally. No, nothing. <laughs> nothing I found apart from one fox that looks like it's been in the bins. I'll show you in a minute. <laughs> nothing else that I have has any hands or feet. Well, I'll, I'll show you. So we've got the baby bunny. Yeah. Yep. Doesn't doesn't actually need any um, limbs. 
because it's just yep. as it is. Actually, I'll, sh I'll let you into secret with this one. So Andy helped me out at the Country Living Fair a couple of years ago, before it was before COVID, I think. And I left him on the stand while I went to teach a workshop. I came back and he'd picked the baby bunny up. Now he's not a needle felter, but he picked the baby bunny up and he decided that he would have a go at needle felting. The only baby bunny sample that I had. And this is what he did to it. Little feet. Put some feet on the bottom of it. So actually this <laughs> one happened. And I'm like, you can't be doing that. Adding detail. Oh my God. So, well, I have, a, I have a story about partners doing needle felting. When I, um, I was still starting out, but I was just starting to sell my pieces and get interest in them. And Steve thought, um, oh, I'll have a go. And he did your fox. He oh, got yeah. one of the kits and um, did that, secretly did it, the little sweet oh. fox. And, um, and he came out after, I don't know, a couple of night secretly doing it and um said look 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 what i've done and you know it was very sweet and everything but he was like i just thought you know i might be able to help you out and you know, how do you tactfully say not a cat in hell's child bless him yeah well we um, our, our relationship survives on being brutally honest <laughs> yeah yeah no. <laughs> so, yeah very healthy. that's a no yeah that's funny but um, i've tried. got two two more things to show you regarding feet so i've been yeah. actually been... oh yes we love so i've been working on bertie bunny today because the Ber bertie bunny which had been a club box had a blue jacket on yeah um, and it looks very much like peter rabbit especially with a blue jacket i mean you know so we wanted to launch bertie as um a kit um, out with the, the club, so we decided we'd better change the colour of that jacket. So he's got now got his Crafty Kit Company red jacket on, but of these course. are the feet. Oh, yes. and they're literally little um, sausages. Yeah, belted onto just the bottom. Little. Ow. Yeah, and, and just really simple. And the arms again are just tightly rolled up wool with the um yeah. the brown belted onto the end so there's no detail on there but i think that um it's all that's required really yeah for... absolutely absolutely and then, do you want to see the fox that's been in the bin yeah go on not literally been in the bin but it looks it no, looks like he's been reading looks the bin. Like he's, he's had better days <laughs> <laughs> oh fella what have you been I, doing <laughs> he's, had a, he's definitely had a good life He's had a good life. He's had a good life. Yeah. This is actually. Um, yeah, he's really sweet. So we've got two of these. This is the one that I don't put out on display, and Alison's one is the one that's really very, you know, it's very detailed and beautiful looking. Um, but it's been quite well handled, so it's getting a little bit raggy as well. But this mm. this guy here, um, designed by Alison Rumbles, and it's got the simple armature, the basic armature inside, and. If you just have a look at his legs and feet again, there's no real detail there, but there's no detail required, I don't think. No. It's just the wire was left long enough so that the feet could then be just turned up at the end yeah. and some darker yeah. wool felted onto the ends. Yeah, and, and nothing more needed, absolutely. No. I mean, I, I've i done, um, which I haven't finished, and it's, it's been not finished for a very long time, a little dashing. But the same thing we're turning around, his, you know, his little feet here, I mean, once again, it's just a little bend, um, yeah. his little tootsies. Um, and whilst he's not finished, he won't get an awful lot more detail. I'm not going to be doing individual toes or anything on him. Because in fact, I think, you know, once I've actually finished his face with his little ears pinned on, um, mm -hmm. it, and sometimes it's, and especially with this type of dog, it's all about, you know, the body. I, I don't see the point in over and he's got his little lopsided sit down but once again just a little bend in the lovely thing. and that's did all that's all that's like, needed the, did the legs get added on afterwards then no when that he... was that that is a full armature with his tail as well so lovely. no no put them all on at the same time 
but so once again that's where I do it add a bit of wall and then make him lopsided and you know, yeah because a lot, a lot of them like to sit like that don't they but um, yeah and we were saying earlier that you know I do have a piece where I've done more detail um, you know that's the full the full piece is a, a lot of detail but to to get to this you just have to do the steps all the way up you know you start with the basic oh that's how long I'm going to do the feet and then you get the perhaps you know a dog where you go oh well, he's going to be sitting sideways and that way and then eventually once you're used to doing those bends in the legs you can do it where you're actually giving him little hocks and things and there are courses on um, YouTube which absolutely show you how to copy those and um, you mentioned earlier Michaela she's her works beautiful I mean if you want to study someone's work of how they get because she, she does foxes and the painted dogs in fact she entered the wildlife artist of the year competition you know that she got uh -huh. through she's uh. got through to the uh, with her painted dogs so um, yeah we could, needle felters yay so. yeah brilliant <laughs> But yeah, um, but you're, you know, I see in quite a lot of needle felting groups on Facebook, people coming on. I've just started needle felting. I'm, I'm feeling so sad. I'll never yeah. be able to, I'm not as good as you guys. I'll never be able to do. But yeah. what they don't realize actually is that with a little bit of time and patience, you can get really good at needle felting really quickly. It's, yeah. you know, yeah. just. And you take, decide, don't you? You decide what you want to do because I, people say, to me oh because you haven't been doing that long and I said no but I decided that that was where I wanted to get to this yes. kind of detail with the animals and things and it was important but I still had to work my way up I didn't just one day go oh do you know I'm going to do a wolf today with you know full yeah. detail and everything it yeah. absolutely doesn't come like that and uh, and sometimes some people prefer to do the more caricature things you know where you're never going to do that kind of detail exactly um, and that to be to be honest that's you know most of our kits are based on that because we find that if we um we tend to design kits that are more entry level because most of our consumers are beginners um especially you know they're buying their first couple of kits and maybe never needle felted before so they tend to be that that kind of style and it's only after you then practice on your own as you say and watch some yeah. youtube videos and and be inspired by people like Michaela and yeah. the, um, the gentleman felt her as well. He's yes. just amazing. Fabulous. But yeah. he's so tiny. He does such tiny yeah. things. Oh my God. <laughs> be inspired by, but don't be frustrated if you can't achieve no. what he's doing, because obviously that's a lot of, a lot of practice and a, probably a lot of um, stabbed fingers as well. Stabbed fingers, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And it's, yeah. and as you say, you know, don't get depressed about it and there, there and now there are so many resources around that you know if you really do want to get to that level I mean I can point you in the direction of many tutorials to go to which are free on on YouTube and just work your way through but don't expect to be brilliant first time it's like everything it takes yeah. practice 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 I mean I go back to some of my original things and sometimes you look at them and think oh my god but actually you were delighted when you did it Yes, because you got to that point and were like, yes, look at that, look yes. what I've managed to do. I'm just yeah. looking over there at that little cat that I made. I'll, I'll go and get it, actually. Mm. Oh, the um, one from the kit. Yes, I remember. And also, um, some I was in one of the um, groups they were saying the other day, and I thought, absolutely spot on. Somebody was saying, you know, um, they got to a point in their needle felting and they were selling their pieces, and someone had come up to them and said, oh, will you be able to do this and they said well you can see my work this uh -huh. is what I do and it was like yeah I want you to you know, it's almost like you do caricatures I want you to do this and they were like no you need to give someone who charges a lot of money to do that. Yeah. I'm at this stage and that's why my pieces don't cost that and you think yeah. yes it's, and that's right you know there's people if people have never needle felted before themselves they don't understand you know how long it takes and mm -hmm and all the rest of it but yes yeah there's a, an example of um progression not that i am you know i'll 
I don't aspire to be um, a Michaela Bartlett or an, or an Anna Potapova or, you know, I, I would love to have the time and dedication to produce beautiful work like that, but that's not what I do. Mm. But I thought that was amazing. <laughs> no, but I do still think I still think he's cute. I do, but so you know, as you but you say you look back at it and think, oh. but you know, I just because I, because I've never done it before, and I yeah. now completely get when people when I'm teaching a class and people make something and that amazement that they made yeah. a thing, you know, and and it and it just appears out of the wool. So yeah. I, I do get it. I do get it. Yeah. Yeah, my one was my first thing like that was a little bunny, and um, I did it on YouTube and, mm. and followed it. And you sort of get to the end and go, Oh my god, it actually looks like a bunny. I remember running downstairs to Steve going, Look, look, I've actually, I've actually made, made a thing. It's like, Yeah, I made a thing. And he recognized what it was, you know. So yeah. he's... <laughs> no, that's yeah. good. Well, I've been, not been watching the time at all, so I've got no oh. idea how. No, 40 minutes. We've been going on for 40 minutes. There you go. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Great. All right, then. <laughs> so, don't forget, everybody, subscribe, comment, and like, and then you'll be entered into the draw onto both the Crafty Kit Company and the Two Teak um, YouTube channels. That's the word I'm looking for. But, uh, right. So, next time, we're talking faces. Yeah, look forward to it. There you go. Okay. All right. So okay. It's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from her. <laughs> <laughs> yes. See you soon. <laughs>